everyone, welcome to Too Cool for Middle School. My name is Megan Duvarney Forbes, and I'm the author of Leaders and Thinkers in American History, 15 Influential People You Should Know. I'm a historian, I have my master's degree in US history, and I'm a history and language arts teacher. I've been teaching middle school for the last 10 years, and so when I had the opportunity to write this book, I definitely wanted to take it because this is exactly what I love to do with my students. I love biography as a way to learn history and I just love looking at different examples of people who made an impact through their leadership or through their ideas. And so I've used this book in my classroom a little bit. We were back in person last year and so I did a couple of lessons with it, but honestly like you need something to go with it, right? Like, it really did prompt some good discussions and my students learned a lot, but it would have helped to have some kind of question template, like just something to kind of keep them focused on some questions together. So I decided to make some lesson plans to go along with each chapter. They look like this. I made them printable, but they are also on Google Slides, so I can kind of just decide what I want to do in the moment, I guess. And I wanted to make these available on my Teachers Pay Teachers site as well, because so many of you wonderful people out there, I know you got this book and you read it and like you learned a lot, but then turning it around and like using it in class, I know is a whole different thing because as I was doing the research for this book, I read so many books, so many great biographies about like Ida B. Wells and Maya Lin and like, such good stuff that I would want my students to know, but then that is a whole nother step of like taking that great content and turning it into something that's accessible to your students. So that's what I've done with the 15 lessons in this book. So just to give you a quick overview of who we cover in this book, here are the 15 chapters. We've got one on George Washington, Tecumseh, Lucretia Mott, Ulysses S. Grant, Harriet Tubman, Thomas Edison, Ida B. Wells, Dorothea Lange, Louis Armstrong, Rachel Carson, Daniel Inouye, Cesar Chavez, Martin Luther King Jr., Sandra Day O'Connor, and Maya Lin. So for US history teachers, or maybe for English teachers, or maybe even for leadership class teachers, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, all of the lessons might be useful to you, but let's say that you're like a science teacher, and you're not gonna use all of those, but maybe you kinda wanna talk about Rachel Carson and her contribution to the scientific community, or maybe, you know, Rachel Carson and Thomas Edison, but not everybody, then you can just get those lessons separately. But then for those of you who want all of them, I'm also gonna put them into a bundle so that you could get a really good discount on all 15 all together. So all of these lessons would just go directly into your Google Drive. The first thing that you're gonna wanna open is the teacher instructions, and it comes with a bunch of links. So first of all, you will need the book in order to teach these lessons, do these lessons. I have the Kindle version linked because like, let's say you're trying to do this tomorrow <laughs> and you don't have time to like wait for a copy to be shipped to you. You just, you need to teach it right away. Just use the Kindle version. I've also linked, you can get um, either the paperback version or the hardcover. There's both available now and I, got a class set for my students. I had to purchase my own, even though I'm the author. I did get a discount, but <laughs> I had to buy them all. Um, so like ideally you would have a class set or maybe enough for like every two to three kids in your classroom that could kind of share them. But you could also make this work if you just had one copy as the teacher that you were reading out loud to your students. You could use like your document camera to put the pages up on your screen so your students could read through. I mean. I, in my decade as a teacher, have taken pictures of pages that I wanted my students to see and put them on Google Classroom, you know? Sometimes we just do what we gotta do, we make copies, whatever. Do whatever you have to do. But in a pinch, it's okay if you just read this out loud. I've tried to provide a lot of scaffolding so that if you don't have very many copies, it's still gonna work. So again, in those teacher instructions, you have the links because you do need the book in order to like actually access the content. You might have already clicked on the link to this video. So I'll just walk you through as the teacher, anything you need to know to get started. I also have another video that's for your students where I'm introducing them to the content a little bit. And then you have a couple of other links that we'll look at in just a second. 
Also within the teacher instructions, you have the answer key. So all of the answers are provided within the book, but it helps a lot to just like have that answer key to refer to as you're going through all of the lessons. So you start off with that. And then, like I was saying, you've got the student worksheets, which I designed. I think they turned out pretty cute. Um, they would be like double-sided if you printed them that way. I did these in color, but you could definitely do them in black and white as well. But these are also in Google Slides format, so you could just push them out to your students if you prefer not to make copies at all. We'll go over these questions in just a second, but the last thing that you'll get is a slide deck that also walks students through all of the questions on the worksheets. So again, if you are reading the book out loud to your students, you could have that slide deck up as well that kind of prompts students in what they're looking for and what they're listening for. So one of my favorite people in this book is Lucretia Mott. So let's use her as an example. I'll just walk you through the chapter and then the worksheets. So each chapter is about six pages and I've read these chapters out loud with my students. I have sixth graders and seventh graders. I did this mostly with my sixth graders and this is written at a level that most sixth graders can comprehend, that they can read out loud. And it's just the right length to like keep them interested and then it ends like right before they're about to check out. So I've, you know, done this with actual human live students and this is a format that really works for them. I definitely wrote this with my historian hat on but also my teacher hat on because I wanted to write something that was challenging and accurate and well researched but also that would keep students engaged. So these chapters will do that for your students. So again, let's say you're doing the Lucretia Mott chapter. You can read it out loud or you can, you know, have student volunteers read some of it. They could read it in groups or partners, however you want to do it. Before you begin reading, there's always a question to consider before you start that chapter. So for Lucretia Mott, it's what are some causes or issues that you are passionate about? You can give your students some time to think about this and then share their answers, talk about them together. Some chapters start this way with like kind of a personal reflection question. Others activate their background knowledge. So the Ulysses S. Grant chapter, for example, this question is, what are some facts that you already know about the American Civil War? And so if it's one of those questions where it's a background knowledge one, I would definitely have students share that information out loud, just like take some volunteers, because there may be some students who haven't had a chance yet in their educational experience to gain that background knowledge. And so they can take somebody else's answers add that to their little storage of information before you get started. So then as you read, they're also going to like be on alert to look out for a few things. These worksheets aren't really like super like comprehension heavy. It's not like, what did it say on page 67 about whatever? You're just more like looking for themes, looking for patterns, stuff like that. So this one says, list three things that Lucretia Mott did throughout her life that most women did not do in the 1800s. So again, that's gonna be up on your board projected through your slides, and they're gonna be thinking about it because it's on their worksheet. So even if you are just reading this out loud to them and they don't have a copy, they could be jotting down some notes. And if they miss some, then you can just go back and talk about it once you're done reading the chapter. So you've got this as you read section, and then at the bottom there's a vocabulary section. We just always want to be building their vocabulary with each chapter. Um, so they'll just write down a new word or term that they learned, and then the definition, which they could just look up in the dictionary. They can Google it, that's fine. And then on the back, because this book is about leaders and thinkers, we're always going to have a question about leadership, and then a question that requires critical thinking. So like I was saying earlier, if you teach like a leadership class or an ASB class, this could be a really good way at the beginning of the year, maybe for those first like 15 weeks, to focus on a different person each week and learn some leadership lessons, maybe learn some pitfalls to avoid through these 15 people. So for Lucretia Mott, we're asking, uh, name two groups that Lucretia advocated for besides women add the names of organizations that helped these people. So that is something that you're gonna to have to go back into the text and look for. Lucretia Mott was an intersectional 
feminist before that was a thing. While many of the women that she worked alongside for women's suffrage were racist, you know, they were willing to leave black women out of this fight. Lucretia Mott was not willing to do that. And so she fought for the rights of black people. She fought for the rights of indigenous people and their specific organizations that she worked with in order to do that. We've also got a critical thinking question. This one says, Lucretia's husband gave up his cotton business because cotton was often produced by enslaved people. What do you think were some of the consequences of this decision? Sometimes when you have strong convictions and you wanna stand up for something, it's going to cost you and you're not gonna be able to just continue to live your life in the exact same way. It might cost you money, it might cost you friends, it might cost you business contacts. Good leadership is not always safe for you. And so through the examples of these people, we're trying to bring up some of those questions and then allow students to tie some of this back to their own lives. Now in each chapter at the end, there's always this explore more section and there's also a tips for you section, kind of little like extension activities that students could do. So I included that on the worksheet as well. So for this explore more, Describe a fair trade product that you found online and how it is made. This one I did leave a little bit less space for because either it could be like an optional like extension activity, early finisher type of a thing, and they could just kind of like jot down what they found, or you could make this into like a, a bigger project where they're gonna need more space anyway, but they just kind of like brainstorm what they wanna do on this worksheet. So since this book is a physical thing, I couldn't, you know, link actual websites in here. I like just typed out the websites. We didn't use like QR codes or whatever. Um, but on the slides, I did link the actual websites that I wanted to direct you to. So that's another, you know, benefit of having those slides up. You can just click on the little sticky note, post-it note, and that will take you to the exact website that I'm talking about. Um, and for a lot of these websites that we're directing students to, there's a pretty open-ended question. It's not really like a scavenger hunt style where it's like, look for this particular answer, this particular answer. So it also gives them the opportunity to practice just like, okay, here's a whole website. Like, how does this work? What are the categories that I might wanna click on? How could I find the information that I'm interested in? So giving them a little bit of time to like play with and explore in these websites is good practice for like research skills and stuff too. So I have a video about the process of writing this book and oh my goodness, it was brutal. It was during quarantine, so at least I was just like home all the time and I could just read constantly and write constantly. But not all of these people were perfect. In fact, none of these people were perfect. Some of them made bad decisions. Some of them made other people really angry. Today, a lot of people are fans of some of the subjects in this book and some people are not fans of them. So one thing that I think we need to get away from when we're teaching biography like this is holding up all of these people like heroes, right? That, okay, every single person in this book is a hero. We're gonna learn about heroes of American history. We're not saying that all of these people were heroes or that they were perfect, but they were leaders and thinkers. We can critique some of the ways that they led, we can critique some of their ideas, we can learn from some of those things, we can applaud some of them, we can try to replicate some of the things that they did, we can try to move forward with some of their ideas, we can try to do better than some of them did. So just avoid you know, trying to make it like a hero worship type of situation. When I was in school, I feel like that's kind of always how we learned about like great men in history, but it's more engaging and more fun and more historically useful to just actually, you know, investigate who these people were and what they cared about and what they did to try to bring their ideas to life. And that's really interesting and students really like to learn about that kind of stuff and it inspires them to do the same thing on their own. So I'm really, really excited for you guys to have this curriculum in your classrooms. I would absolutely love to like see it in action, like take a picture, send it to me in a DM on Instagram or something, leave a comment on YouTube and let me know how it went. If you have any questions, I've been like living and breathing this for two years or more. <laughs> so I can absolutely help you. I am also a teacher that is, you know, trying to implement this in my classroom. So I'm sure on like Instagram stories throughout the year, I'll give you guys little updates of how it goes in my classroom. If we kind of 
hit some walls. I'll let you know about things. If there's anything that goes particularly well, I'll let you know. So we can kind of teach this together, which is a really fun thing. I will have everything linked below as I have it ready. So I've been, been working for months on all of these 15 different lessons. I have most of them done. I'm excited to bundle them and I'm thinking of adding some like extra bonus lessons to the bundle for anybody who wants to get that, like extension activities. If um, your students do read about all 15 people, maybe they can go back and like pick their favorite one and do a little bit extra research on them or compare two of the people or something like that. So I'll be updating that bundle and like adding extra things as we go, but I'll let you know, I will, you know, talk about it here on YouTube, post on Twitter, Instagram, make sure that like you can always find the answers that you need. And again, ask me questions anywhere you'd like to on Teachers Pay Teachers, here on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I'm available to answer your questions. Thank you so much for being here with me today and I can't wait to see your students becoming even greater leaders and thinkers than they already are. And thank you to you as a teacher for bringing them this kind of content. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon, bye.